So the national media is getting this correct. The election, 2019 election of Kentucky, did turn out to be a referendum of Trump. It's a ruby red, blood red state. Super red. In Kentucky, you have a bunch of UK basketball fans. You got a bunch of bourbon drinkers. You got some horse jockeys. And a shit ton of Republicans. Uh, I don't even know what the Democrats are, but they showed up. You know, this year I'm tickled pink <laughs> that uh, they are blood red. So talk about reds. The Republicans are the reds now. The Republicans are the, the racist party. So before the Republicans used to be the party of Lincoln, right? And Lincoln, he studied by candlelight. And Lincoln is Kentucky's greatest. One of Kentucky's greatest citizens ever, and a lot of Kentuckians don't like him. They'll say, well, he did this thing that wasn't good. He ended, he freed the slaves. Name another historical figure that freed this Moses, Moses, who wasn't even real. So what other historical figure freed the slaves? Probably some Roman somebody. So anyways, let's talk about the laws that's surrounding this. So Lincoln, you know, educated himself by candlelight. So maybe we all can learn the law, right, Kentucky? We can all read the law. So Bush v. Gore, controversial case. They stopped the recount. If the recount would have happened, then, you know, Gore would have won, essentially. Or no, he wouldn't have. I'm not for sure. But the recount was stopped, so the Supreme Court had selected the president, not elected it. So I do question B. V. Gore's logic, but this sentence here makes sense to me. It says, you got to vote on equal terms. A state may not, by arbitrary disparate treatment, value one person's vote over another. And so the election is free and fair, and the recount is going to be less free and fair than an election. So you would have to have a re another election if you actually had enough discrepancies or irregularities which is what Matt Bevin is saying. So you had Andy Brashear, he's going to win Kentucky's gubernatorial election 2019 by 5,000 votes. And that's very close, less than 1%, but he won the election. And then John Hicks was able to get, I think, 12,000 votes or so, so he beat the spread. So you could say he's a spoiler because it's not a fair election. 42% of Kentuckians voted. It was a referendum on Trump. Now, thousands of absentee ballots could have been illegally counted, according to Matt Bevin. A number of people were turned away from the polls, and a number of machines didn't work properly. So, Matt Bevin has not conceded. Matt Bevin is still pushing for this to go the gauntlet. So, let's get some election integrity. Let's see if the election of Kentucky was actually fair and free the way it's supposed to. Now, Section 90... The exact wording is that contested elections for the governor and lieutenant governor of Kentucky shall be determined by both houses of the General Assembly. Both the Senate and the House of Kentucky's legislature of the general ass, they get to determine to such you know, regulations as determined by law. So if there's a contested election, it goes to the legislature. If this election is contested, they could recount, re-canvas, but ultimately the House could steal it. The State Board of Elections is scheduled November 21st to meet, and then November 25th, they are supposed to certify it. The 1899 Global election had the Global lost the election. The State Board of uh, Elections said Global lost, but the House overturned it anyways, and then Global became governor. And so that's... The 1899 election shows that Bevin could push this to be a contested election. Robert Stivers is sitting there saying that it's possible, too. Now, there's a lot of problems with that proposition because they don't have a procedure of how to do the recount, of how to actually investigate this thing. So the Section 90 says that a contested election can be determined by both houses of the General Assembly to such regulations as determined by law. And what that means is that the contest of elections, the procedure, must be established by law beforehand because how can you tell if the procedures that they're going to come up with now is going to be fair? If they came up with the laws beforehand, then that would be fair. But right now they're going to come up with the laws. And there was a case, Roe v. Alabama, it's a 1995 11th Circuit Court case. So this is case law, right? So Roe v. Alabama had said that the state had changed the recount law after the election, and they invalidated it, saying that that's not fair. 
So, if there's no laws written on the books for Section 90 of how a recount is supposed to happen, then the 11th Circuit case, Roe v. Alabama, expects, you know, the Kentuckians to, or the Republicans, I mean, Kentuckians, Republicans, that's all, you, you go to Kentucky, that's all you see, right? There's a bunch of Republicans over here, Republicans over there, Republicans up here, Republicans over there, Republicans everywhere. So, by the law, what's going to happen is the state could try to steal it, right? The state of Kentucky, then Brashear is going to file federal lawsuits against him. And he's probably going to win in federal court. So, Andy Brashear has got the more votes. The re canvas isn't going to turn up with it. <coughs> no. Isn't going to turn up with anything. So let's talk about some more of the laws, okay? So Bush v. Gore says that election process is going to be more fair than a recount is. So if anything, you should have a whole other election if you're going to, you know, do a recount. If there's enough irregularities or enough fraud, but to have the House steal it, that's you know that would. Pit, that pisses me off that they're even talking like this, right? They, they lost the election, but they're crying sour grapes. 5,000 is close, so they're going to try to, you know, basically just, um, and Bevin has always been close elections. 38, he actually won the primary in 2015 by 38 votes. So, it's very possible the legislature could decide it. They got, you know, Bevin's got 30 days to contest the election. So in the next 30 days, Bevin could contest the election in spite of the state board certifying it November 25th. Today is November 8th. The election was November, November 5th. So it's three days ago, and then it's the 8th right now. So that means in, what, in 13 days. In 13 days, they're going to go ahead and meet. The re-canvas is scheduled November 14th. So that's in six days. In six days, there's going to be a re-canvas. In 13 days, the state board is going to meet. And then in, um, I guess, 19 days, the state board, if it goes to, according to schedule, will certify the election for Andy Brashear November 25th. Andy Brashear is against child abuse. Andy Brashear is for teachers and the unions. Andy Brashear is for abortion. And he's for casino gaming. And he's for medical marijuana. So, you know, he's not the most progressive, but he is left of center. He was the third most progressive in the primary. Adam Edelin and Jeff Young both ran to the left of, um, of Andy Brashear. So, in some respects, people say, see, centrism works. Centrism works. But he's actually left of center. Anyways, so Section 90 says, you know, that the House can do it. It is possible. They do seem like they're going to indicate that they are going to steal this election. And so what the Democrats will have to do is file federal court and then make all the arguments that, you know, I just made with the whole Alabama case, the whole Roe v. Alabama in 1995, and then even Bush v. Gore. So the only way that they could steal this election, I think, legitimately, is by having another election. And I think another election would just do Andy Brashear a ton of good. Have another election. Throw another election and see what happens. I bet you the exact same thing happens. Only Andy Brashear will get more votes and so will John Hicks. And Matt Bevin will have lost even worse than what he had lost to begin with. So the uh, a GOP, a representative, state representative, a Republican, Jay, as I would say, Jay Young, Jason, Jay Young Neems, he says that there's no goods. He says that they don't have any evidence of fraud. And so that he would know what's going on, I would think. A member of the Republican Party, a state representative in the House of Kentucky says that they don't have the goods. They don't have the goods. There's not enough irregularities. There's not enough illegal absentee ballots or people being turned away at the polls or, you know, machines actually being hacked. I'm not sure if the Russians meddled in this election or not, but, you know, the diebold machines... If they don't find any of them being hacked and then the absentee ballots, you know, all those are uh, good and right and proper and legit. And uh, so if they find all that stuff out, then I don't think that um, it's going to go their way. So they don't have the goods. A couple other laws I want to mention. Section 6 says that all elections have to be free and equal. Section 26 says that the general powers are subordinate to the Bill of Rights. Section 4 is the right to revolution. Section 149 says that voters are free to vote. And Section 145 says idiots and insane persons can't vote, nor inmates in jail, nor treason or felons or those who bribe 
an election. So all those people that contributed campaign funds, they are bribing an election, an election official. So all the, you know, soft money, all the PACs, the super PACs, all the donations, you're bribing, you know, the official. <clears throat> One thing in Kentucky's Bill of Rights, the Victim's Bill of Rights. Kentucky killed the Victim's Bill of Rights. So Matt Bevin passed right-to-work law, right, so that kills the unions. So he's anti-union, so this is economic populism on some, you know, respects. And um, Andy Brashear is, you know, was talking about the issues, the teachers and, you know, even abortion in Kentucky. So you have, uh, and child abuse. <coughs> So, yeah, that's, uh, that's what's going on. The ratified by voters, overturned, nullified. So the Victim's Bill of Rights was voted on by the Kentucky people. They voted for it, and then the courts nullified it and overturned it. And they, victims do need, you know, a Bill of Rights. We should protect the victim more so than the criminal. I mean, that's kind of crazy that they invalidated the Victim's Bill of Rights. So those are just some other laws of Kentucky that, uh, you know, I'd want the people to consider. The elections have to be free and equal, Section 6. The general powers are subordinate to the Bill of Rights, Section 26. Section 4 is the right to revolution. There's no victim's Bill of Rights, so you, Matt Bevin cannot cry victim. <laughs> section 149, voters are free to vote. Section 145, unless you're an idiot or insane or an inmate in jail or you're a treasonous scumbag or a felon or if you bribed an election official, then you cannot vote. So those, that is Section 145. So those are some other sections of Kentucky's Constitution.